I often get asked the question, should I brake before clutch or clutch before brake? So let me explain. Well, if you actually think about it, there's five methods because you can brake before clutch, that's one, clutch before brake, two, press them both at the same time, three, only brake or only clutch. So which one is good for when? Or is there one that you should prefer over the other? Let's find out. The first thing you need to understand is that the clutch must come down when the revs get to around a thousand RPM. It says 10 here, but it actually means a thousand. So I'm slowing down now with the brake and when the revs get near a thousand, clutch down to make sure it doesn't stall. If you don't have a rev counter, one of these things that tells you how fast your engine is spinning, then you've got to go by sound, which is a little bit harder if I'm honest with you, which is why I would only teach people in a car with a rev counter, because I can actually show them what's happening. If you don't have a rev counter, what you're gonna to have to do is go by sound and listen to the engine. When the engine gets very quiet, you probably need to press the clutch down. If it starts to struggle, then you're too late. Definitely get the clutch down. With experience and practice, you will start to get good at judging the sound it makes before it struggles, so that you can preempt the struggle and get the clutch down before it struggles. So at the moment I'm driving along and my revs are very close to a thousand RPM, which means if I want to go much slower, I'll need to press the clutch down. So on this occasion, I'll clutch down first and then brake as my revs were near the minimum. Their minimum is actually here, but around a thousand a safe ballpark. So when your revs get to near a thousand, you know clutch needs to be down. It doesn't actually need to be down this car to about 750 but a thousand is playing it safe. So I'm gonna get going again now, and I'm gonna show you the other method, brake first. So to do that, I'm probably gonna need a little bit more speed. So at the moment I'm driving along, and my revs are closer to 2000 RPM, as you can see. So there's no need for the clutch. I'll start braking first, and when the revs get near a thousand, then I'll press the clutch down to make sure I don't stall. This time I'm driving along and my revs are near a thousand RPM again, but I find out I need to brake quite suddenly. I don't have time to press the clutch first and then the brake, so I'll just do both at the same time to make sure I stop without stalling. So that's three methods. Let's move on to the fourth and that's only brake. You would only brake when you know you're not going to make the revs go too low. You're just slowing down a little bit. You don't want to go for the clutch every time you just slow down a bit, it's, it's not very smooth, it doesn't help your car control. So here, actually just a good example, I just slowed down to go around this ambulance and this truck, you probably can't see it there, but it's an ambulance and truck there, and all I did was I transitioned from the gas to the brake just to brush a bit of speed off. I didn't need to slow down enough to warrant pressing the clutch down or changing gear, so I just used the brake. Now, for example, let's say I wanna slow down, I just use the brake. The revs don't go below a thousand, so I'm okay. It went a little bit below a thousand, but I'm still okay. It didn't go all the way down to 750. So I go back to the gas and carry on. I've got to slow down again. Just use the brake to slow down. No clutch needed again. Back to the gas, go around this parked car and carry on. So now there's one left and that is to only use the clutch. You're only gonna do this when you're uphill. A lot of new drivers have a problem stopping uphill. And the problem is they stop way too early all the time because until you learn how a car works, you don't expect the car to slow down quite as quickly as it does when you're going uphill. So when your driving instructor asks you to pull over at the side of the road, you go for the brake and go to slow down like you would do on the flat, which you're probably used to because that's where you started. You probably started on flats and the car suddenly slows down and you're still in your lane. You haven't yet even reached the curb, let alone line up with the curb to make sure you're straight and nicely parked. This is where using the clutch only can help because then you're not adding braking to the car. You're not slowing it down more quickly. The hill's already doing that for you. You're letting the hill slow down on its own. And in fact, when you use this method, it's probably best not to go straight for the clutch straight away. Firstly, just start to reduce the gas. Let the hill start to slow you down by giving less gas, maybe a little bit of gas so the hill doesn't slow you down too much. And you gradually come off the gas more and more until you're happy and you think, hmm, I need to come off gas completely now because I'm nearly there. I definitely want to slow down more. Then you press the clutch down to make sure you continue slowing down and you may need a little bit of brake at the end. You probably will if you're up here actually to stop you rolling back. 
if you're going to carry on, if you're not parking, if you're just slowing down in traffic, you may not even go for the brake. You might use the gas and bring the clutch up again as the car stops to carry on. Here's an example. So I'm moving away now and get a little bit of speed. And let's say I want to pull over at the side of the road. So I'm doing about 18 miles an hour. I want to slow down. So I'm coming off the gas gently and it starts to slow down. I don't want to stop here yet. So I'm holding the gas a little bit just to keep it going. Now I'm off the gas fully because I do want to slow it down more. Now the car starts pulling me along. So I want the clutch down to signal there's a car behind me. And the car is stopping itself. And just as it stops, I'm going to use a little bit of brake to stop me from rolling back. And moving on from that, you may only use the clutch as well when you're in traffic. As I just mentioned, you may want to be stopping and starting uphill. No need to keep going for the brake. So if I was stopping and starting uphill, I've got gas and bike point now to move myself forwards. Track, the traffic in front slows down, so I push the clutch down to slow down. The traffic in front starts moving, bit of gas, lift the clutch to carry on. It starts slowing down again, clutch down, let it slow down. It starts to move, gas and bike point to carry on. The traffic stops for a while, well, clutch down, maybe then I'll use the brake to stop me rolling back and then do a handbrake start when I wanna get going again so I don't roll back. I have a video on hill starts. Check it out if you don't know what I mean when I say handbrake start. So there you go, there's your five methods. Whether you use the brake first or the clutch first or both at the same time or you don't need to brake at all, all depends on the situation. If you're uphill, you're probably gonna need very little brake. If you're downhill, you're certainly gonna need more brake and you don't need to get the clutch down until the revs are around a thousand. Try not to go down this road of pressing the clutch down every time you need to slow down to make sure you don't stall because you're afraid of stalling, you really don't want to stall, and you think, well, if I press the clutch down, there's no chance of me stalling because that brings about its own problems. The problem with pressing the clutch down every time you go to slow down when it's not needed is you don't get engine braking, and engine braking is very useful, especially downhill. If you press the clutch down first when you're downhill, the car's going to speed up a little bit before you get to the brake to slow down which is why you'd only want to press the clutch down first when you're downhill if the revs are already low. And in that situation, I'll probably use the brake and the clutch at the same time to avoid the car or to prevent the car from speeding up when you press the clutch down. The brake will help you stay slow. Some driving instructors will tell you you must brake before clutch all the time. They're trying to oversimplify it a little bit so you don't go for the clutch unnecessarily. The problem with that is, is that if you do need the clutch down first, if you brake first, you're going to make the car struggle and maybe even stall. To know how low your car can rev, simply switch it on and see where the revs settle. Where the revs settle is about where the minimum is. So you want to get the clutch down by that point. Some cars are as high as 1,000. Some cars go down to about 500. This is around about 750. But in any situation, make sure you get the clutch down by the time the engine gets to its minimum speed to prevent you from stalling. Don't try and get the clutch down much before it because you won't have engine braking, which will affect you negatively downhill. But also, you may get into the habit of just pressing the clutch down every time you see a problem when you didn't actually need the clutch down. You only needed a brake a little bit, which means you've pressed the clutch down for no reason. You've got to bring it back up again, which takes time. And if you don't bring it up very well, it's gonna be less smooth too. Here's some bonus information. This isn't totally related to when to get the clutch down. This is more about should you change gear as soon as the clutch goes down, because that's another common problem new drivers have is they go for the gear stick as soon as the clutch goes down, even though they don't need to, when their attention is better focused on braking because braking is actually quite hard to get braking done well you have to focus on it otherwise you'll brake too early or too late if you're not fully focused i'm talking about if you're coming up to a really slow junction a junction where you know you're likely going to have to stop or very nearly stop i'm in third gear at the moment doing around about 20 miles an hour and i'm coming up to a junction i'm not actually let's pretend i'm coming up to a junction where i'm going to have to almost stop so I'm gonna start braking, and when my revs get to around 1,000, I'm gonna press the clutch down, just leave it in third gear. I don't need to change the gear. I just focus on my braking, so I get that right level of braking to get really close to the end of the road, or whatever it is you're trying to stop for, and really slow. And once you're really slow, then pop it in first, and either continue stopping and stop with the brake, or if it's safe, carry on. 
That makes such a big difference to new drivers because it allows them to really focus on their braking. And you don't really want to select first gear until you're nearly stopped anyway. So better wait until you've basically finished stopping and then go into first. Because some cars, if you try and put them into first gear when you're going at any kind of speed, much more than five miles an hour, it's really stiff to get it into gear. And it puts a lot of strain on first gear synchro mesh so it can wear your gears out a bit quicker too. However, I have a different opinion when it comes to slowing down to say between five and 15 miles an hour or anything above five miles an hour really. Then I recommend you go into the lower gear to give you engine braking, which will help you slow down smoothly. But because you've gone into the lower gear and you've brought the clutch back up again, you're now ready to go when the time comes. I don't recommend doing it if you're gonna stop, if you know you're gonna stop or nearly stop, using engine braking does make it well, it helps you slow down a bit more smoothly, but it does make it a lot more complicated, which can be difficult for a newer driver because they've got to go to a lower gear, bring the clutch back up again, and when they get too slow for that gear, they've got to press the clutch back down again. So if you are nearly stopping, just brake, push the clutch down and wait until you're nearly stopped. But if you know you're not gonna stop and you're most likely just gonna slow down to some sort of jogging speed or anything above that really, go to the gear that's appropriate for that speed. For example, I'm in third gear again, about 20 miles an hour, and I'm looking at a problem up ahead, and I think I'm probably gonna have to slow down to about 10 miles an hour for that, I'm probably have to jog around that problem. So I'll break, go to second gear, bring the clutch back up. Now I'm ready to continue. Bringing the clutch up helped me slow down. Now I wanna go, I press the gas and I go, I don't have to do anything with the gears and clutch afterwards, I'm ready. If you're practicing without an instructor, make sure you have insurance. Get £20 off via the link in the description to Collingwood who provides specialist learner insurance that allows you to practice in a friend or family member's car without risking their no claims bonus. If you want to insure your own car, click on the link to confuse.com. I have found that they have the widest selection of cheap insurers for young drivers. If you think that video helps you, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to get my future videos. Until the next one, cheerio.